So Nandini. Thanks, Steve. Thank you to all of our colleagues from the donor organizations, I think, who raised some really interesting issues. And of course, I'd like to ask you a question about each one of them. But I'm going to just focus on one that I saw as an overwhelming pattern that actually intrigues me. I, I don't really understand why it's happening the way it is. I think both Mark Dybul and Michelle Kazachkin said for several different questions that were put to them, on health information systems and on supply chains, that this is really up to the country governments to request the funding for a particular um, issue, be it health information systems or supply chains or around health workers. So the question to me is that if all of these programs have been in existence for five years and more, why is it that countries are not requesting it? Why is leadership not coming to these donor organizations to ask for these things. Is it an issue of communication strategy? Or is there something else that's going on? I mean, it cannot be that countries don't know that they can request assistance. So it's, it's a little confusing to me, and I would love to know from an insider perspective why the demand for funding for particular issues that are critical in countries is not occurring. OK, thank you. William, let's go down, down the line and get whatever comment or question, and then we'll come back for our speakers to close. William. Thank you very much, uh, Steve. Um, I think I really appreciate the way uh, the three donors have responded and uh, shared their, uh, their perspective in a very, very open way, and we appreciate that. However, I really, my question would be directed to the World Bank and to Deborah Work, and this is to do with the, the, the way you are ad uh, proposing to address the human resource uh, issues. First of all, you talked about task um, shifting. And my question is, who is really now taking up the work? Say, for example, you are shifting a nurse to do the work of uh, a medical doctor or, say, a clinical officer. Who is, who is addressing the gap that is left? But uh, maybe more fundamentally, you talked about uh, the new initiative uh, that is been put together to address uh, issues of human, uh, I mean, human resource uh, in the health sector. Now, uh, how are the local institutions being drawn, for example, universities or research institutions in country, how are they going to be drawn into this? We know that sometimes when things are left to the ministries or it becomes very difficult to draw these other players, including people, uh, institutions from civil society. Thank you. Freddie? Thanks, Steve. And I want to thank all the uh, donors. I think we've really uh, very appreciative of their time, but also the responses. I've noted, of course, the fact that um, many of them are interested in trying to do better in many ways. But I think I want to restrict my question to information systems, since this is the topic I've been talking about this evening. We see that uh, there is a lot of attempts, especially among donor programs, to support government systems to generate information, but they are not, there's no um, attempts to try and generate capacity that is sustainable enough so that they leave behind something. I will give you an example in Uganda, every donor program or project leaves behind a software to try and capture data for its program and puts it to the ministry to expand. And I think there are so many of them that you could do almost a systematic review around them. So I think, why are these not being scaled up? And how can we generate, put these resources to try and get a system that can work across all these? I think I like the idea that you're beginning to look at a package of indicators and agree that this indicate, these indicators are, are generating data across. But I think. We really want to see more investment here so that uh, these performance-based arrangements don't frustrate implementation of programs. Thank you very much. Dietze, did you have any comments, questions? OK, thank you. I really appreciate all the answers of the donors. And just a general comment um, related with the monitoring and evaluation system, since we are all talking about that, and it's so important. 
in Mozambique, we face a particular situation that we have a very well-structured monitoring and, and evaluation system, uh, but unfortunately, it's mainly on paper. It's not yet been in total, just partially operationalized. So uh, I don't want to raise a question directly to donors, but I would like just to to say that there is actually an opportunity to donors to participate more at operational level with government to try to these plans to be implemented because we realize that despite all the, the training and all support that particularly from the World Bank, many of these systems are still in paper and not operationalized.